Hello, and welcome back to Anime on Draft. It is now episode 12. I am Rolando, your host, joined by my co-hosts, Alec. What's up? And Drew. Hello. All right, well, uh, this week we will be reviewing the Hoya Brewery. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Delirium Nocturnum it is a Belgian uh, style ale. And then we are going to cover the last episode of Aeromanga Sensei and episode 12 of Sakura Quest. So uh, why don't we get started off right into the pairing. And um, so, Drew, you chose this Delirium Nocturnum. Uh, why did you choose it? I like the name. Um, their other beer that I've had is called uh, Delirium Tremens. And for those of you don't who don't know what that is, it's basically um, a dire symptom of alcohol withdrawal. So if you have delirium tremens or like DTs, basically you stumble around like a crazy fucking person trying to like make rational sense of like reality, but you can't because your body's going through rituals and alcohol and you can die from it. And I dealt with that a lot uh, in my previous job. Um, so I saw the name. I'm like, that's really cool. But I've already had Delirium Tremens, so I wanted to try um, another style from uh, the same brewery that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> also, the the pint is kind of cool, but I don't like the pink elephant on it. It's kind of creepy. Really? You don't like it? Yeah. It's just the pink like elephant. It. It's wow. fucking creepy looking. Pink elephant's dude. on parade, dude. It's Come a on. pink elephant, dude. Um, I don't like. I don't like it. I don't know if anyone remembers the first episode where we talked about like beers we like. I did mention Delirium Tremens as a um, one of my favorite Belgian ales. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited to try this one out. My Have one you of my had this oldest. One before, or? Nope, not yet. <clears throat> one of my oldest memories of Delirium Tremens actually is the first time I drank it. Somebody spilled the like pouring it and it went down like the side of the bottle like a whole bunch of it so i just remember trying to use the bottle and it being really sticky mm. yeah and now every time no, I, I pick up one of these bottles i always think my hand's gonna get sticky and it hurts <laughs> me out <laughs> although is it uh, like glass is it, it like feels like it's like ceramic yeah yeah i think it's some sort of like textured paint um i do have to say that this is Belgium, uh, or Belgian. So, this is Belgium. Th- yeah, this is. Belgium. I didn't know. I'm. Wow. <laughs> when did I get here? <laughs> Whoa. This is. This, this is, is a, cool. This is a Belgian beer. So, um, I guess, Delirium Tremont would be how you pronounce it, because or not this specific one, but you know the one that we have all had, because there's the huge French influence along with the German influence in Belgium. So, just gonna point that out. Um, Nino? Cool. So, uh, why don't we uh, take our first sip? Let's go. It's dark as hell. Super carbonated. Like, bubbles furiously rising. Oh, wow. That Ooh. mouth feel. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. It's spicy, but not in taste, in pokiness. That just kicks you, like, right in the face that it's like drinking feel. soda mm-hmm exactly it's like drinking soda yeah the head like, sticks around for a while at least on mine yeah, it i got did. a th- i got a thick frothy head wow this it's is dark a, this is a very bitter um a bitter ale it's not too bitter for me. Um, I was expecting it to be like almost the way you s- it smells. I was expecting it to kind of almost taste like a sour. So maybe I was just expecting that. But to me, it's not like very bitter at all. Um, but then again, I don't think IPAs are bitter. So, <laughs> yeah, there's probably something wrong with you. Um, <laughs> but uh, like in terms of uh, Belgian ales, this is a very bitter ale. Uh, it's got those similar characteristics, the fruity notes, um, the spice. Um, it's got a great kick with the carbonation and, uh, the best yeah. part is the mouthfeel though. It's like, it's so interesting. <laughs> it's neat. It's like you're, it's like, uh, kind of how I imagined fizzy lifting drink or whatever would feel when you drank it at Willy Wonka's or whatever in that movie, you know? Oh That's yeah. That's kind of, yeah. Just by the name fizzy lifting, that kind of, 
is kind of how it feels, I would say, I guess. I've never had fizzy lifting, whatever. But I'd imagine it's something like that. <laughs> I do get what you mean, Drew, by thinking it would be like a sour. Because even looking at the color of it, it's got like that kind of reddish, dark, deep red color that a lot of other sours have. It also smells like a sour. Yeah, it. you can, like when you drink it, you get the fruity tones of something that you would think is like maybe aged or fermented or something, but it doesn't really, to me at least, it doesn't taste like that though. It smells like that, but it doesn't taste like that. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, the it, it, like, it does have bitterness to it. It's more in the beginning, like right off the bat, and mm-hmm. then at the end. It's not in the middle though. You get no. all the other flavors in the middle. It does kind of linger with the bitterness at the very, very end over other flavors. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what else. Yeah, it's spicy like a Belgian. What's interesting Good. with this is uh, it begins to change, like the taste begins to change the more you drink it. So, like at first it's really bitter, but then that starts to go away as the spiciness starts to kick in a bit more along with is there the something fruit. is there like something wrong with me i i it doesn't taste bitter to me at all like at for, all for me it's not like a lot of bitter there there is like if you wait till <clears throat> i don't know two three seconds after you've taken a drink kind of just like i don't know let it just let pay it attention to the edge of your tongue mouth. Well, yeah. I'm I'm a big like, you know, the beers that we've had like the not last week, but like a couple weeks ago. It's like I always complain about that aftertaste feel. Like I don't I don't even get bitterness from the aftertaste in this. Like I I, I get zero amounts of I I get like sa- a little bit of soury notes. Like not like a, a sour sour, but like the fruit or some sort of you know whatever they use to make this, the mash or whatever. Do you get the spicy? But, I don't even get the spicy. I I get I think like your taste buds I think your broke. taste buds are fucked up, dude. Did I get the wrong beer? <laughs> 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 you, like two of us are tasting this, and you're just like, I don't taste any of that. Like, dude, you might want to get don't. checked out. I don't. <laughs> like, I don't. You know? I don't taste any bitter, and I I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he looks down. He's like, wait, this beer is actually beige. Oh, like, oh, wait, this bad. is Bud Light. Sorry. <laughs> am i am i am i imagining this pink elephant guys <laughs> dude you're you're winnie the pooh man pink elephants are on parade bro you too yeah i don't i don't know i don't know guys maybe i'm just broken well we already know i'm broken we know but... you're broken but yeah. the extent of how broken you are that's that's the real question yeah i don't i don't know i don't get bitter <laughs> well uh what do you get i mean we've been talking about like the bitterness and spiciness but like what do you I don't get I don't get very much spice. I get like a muddle of like I don't know, it's like mellow. It's like it's not super sour, it's not super spicy. It's got a velvety like coating of your mouth texture. I have no aftertaste whatsoever. Um let me take another sip. I smell yeah. it and I smell like I it looks and it smells like the sour we did, the Duchess de Bourguignon or whatever the fuck it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, it smells like that, um, but doesn't have the lingering taste like that. It's just like a mellow. Let me take a sip. Um, yeah, no spice. Hardly at all. Like maybe, maybe coriander, like a little bit, but. I don't get spice or bitter. I just get like velvety, velvety, like what kind of fruit, some sort of fruit, like velvety cherries, maybe cherries, maybe pear. Um, I'm leaning more towards cherries. Yeah, I think it's really cherry ish. Yeah, the fruity but note. I yeah, yeah. Like I said, no, no bitter for me. I don't mm. know. Mm. It, it's not like a lot. It's not I, super bitter. I to didn't. Me, but. I didn't think the double fucking mission IPA was that bitter. So they, I thought it was bitter, but I didn't think it was like that bitter. And you guys were like dying. So I don't know. Maybe I was dying with that one. Words. I thought that one was very drinkable. Well, Alec, Alec was dying. <laughs> I didn't like it. It might be. <laughs> I didn't you like know what? Well, we might be finding out that. 
we have like three different sets of taste buds. So like, well, that makes sense. It, like, it's good that we have three different. <laughs> Well, usually we're beers. we're kind of at least like on the same page, you know. But like for this, you guys are saying one thing. I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't get it. But well, I, I mean, that's yeah. a good thing. It's, it's good to contrast. There, I mean, yeah. there's also like different tastes. So like some people yeah. um, are are less sensitive to the extremes of tastes, um, mm. as opposed to some people that have very sensitive um, palates, where like even just like something that may seem normal to other people would be like too much for them so like i kind of feel like maybe alec is more on the sensitive side and then you're more on the like the least less sensitive side yeah be, that's why part it of it your, bitter, that's your, for sure. your tastes kind of differ a bit in terms of like IPs well, and, and that part of it too on a personal level too i can't smell anything like <laughs> I, my nose is always like clogged up like i can smell like a little bit like if i put this like right up to my face and like take like a big like whiff i can smell it but like I don't know if this is TMI, but like I used to clean shit for a living. Um, and I can't, I can't, I can't, I, well that, and like, I can't even smell it. I can't like, it, it doesn't bother me and I, and I can't smell it. So (laughs) professional shit cleaner. Yeah. Human Um, waste cleaner. Well, yeah, I, I definitely get, I get the, the bitter you're talking about and the spiciness. I get the fruity that you're talking about drew as well. It's definitely there in the middle for me. Kind of that middle, when you get all those flavors in the center, you get that fruity, spicy kind of thing. Um, malty, I guess. It, it probably in the cent- in the middle there, it's kind of malty too. Um, yeah, I get the malt. Mm-hmm. So, I, I see the, this would what, be the good. things you're talking about. This would be good with a cigar. Yeah, this probably. is this is more of a beer that you sip and enjoy rather than, you know... Let's say like a few weeks ago we had the it was the Orange Avenue, um, mm-hmm. wit the wit, like that one's more of a session beer, right? Because like oh yeah, yeah. you just like you know chill and and just you know drink and drink. Like this one's more of one like you let it sit, you drink a bit. Yeah, this one enjoy, uh, and yeah. This one isn't like refreshing, whereas the other one is like you garnish it and mm-hmm. it's like it's it's. This good is like not that, like a like, summer session beer. No, where no. you're gonna have this is a five. This is a you're you're in a humidor or like a smoking lounge somewhere, and like you have this and like the fire is going, and you're just yeah. like reading a book and chilling and smoking yeah. and drinking. <laughs> chilling. And, it's probably well, good that way, you're pink, not pinky out drinking too much of it since it is like eight point five percent. Yeah, it's yeah. a strong one. Uh, what temperature is your guys' beer at? Is it very cold? cold? It's cold. Very cold. Very cold. Okay. Mine is like, so I bought it, put it in the fridge, and then it sat there. It's not quite as cold as yours, I'm assuming, because mine actually is like, by now, it's already almost normal temperature, I guess. Mm-hmm. So that might be changing the flavors I get, too. But sure. Could, yeah. What are you it, drinking out of? I'm in a tulip. Tulip glass I'm in a tum- as well. Tulip as well. Yeah. A two mil? A two mil. Tum- I'm in a two tum- mil. A tomb lip class. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, So, you know, different factors could weigh in on that. So I think it's good that like we each have different taste buds from one another. So like it, Mm -hmm. it kind of covers more of like, sorry, there's police in the background. Um, Covers more (laughs) um, for like our listeners so that they can like each tune to their own tastes like oh like yeah i have a more sensitive tongue like i i'll listen to what alex says and like you know judge my opinion on that well and also feel free to just just call me an idiot and be like hey, you're an idiot if you can't <laughs> well, i mean taste we like call you an idiot better, every like... day so it's... <laughs> hey drew hey drew hey, hey drew you're an What's idiot up, dude? <laughs> there you go Arigato. Uh, <laughs> so uh, i'm gonna cry now in the corner uh, Let's uh, oh, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> now that we're done with these first impressions, let's um go ahead and review this beer. Um, Alec, why don't we start with you? Um, <clears throat> I think it's definitely drinkable. Um, it's not. <clears throat> pardon me. Um, it's not super like heavy on the alcohol taste. Um, which is always nice. It's got those typical kind of like Belgian flavors that you expect. You know the spicy. F- like flavor in there um it unless you're drew and you can't taste them it's got the fruit so there's that um but i think the coolest part about this beer is definitely that when i took that first sip that like explosion of bubbles Mm. like on my tongue is definitely the coolest part about this beer um and it brings it like 
up higher for me. Uh, so I'm probably going to say, like, I would buy this again. I'll probably give this a, mm, let's give it a four. How about that? So I like cool. it a lot. <clears throat> I, uh, so, um, Drew, what do you think? I enjoy this. It's like interesting to drink. It's it's different from what I would usually buy. Um, the mouthfeel is everything for me in this. It's just it's it's you get that like I don't know like that crispness. I don't know. I don't know if that's the correct word, but like when you're drinking like a, a nice cold soda and you pop it open, you take that first sip. It's like very crisp and it like coats your mouth and it's like velvety. It's like that's what you really get with this. Like right. a Coca Cola. Uh, yeah, yeah, and like it kind of goes up through your nose and the carbonation, and you're just like, yeah, this is nice. Um, <laughs> not to not to say that it's light though, like um, like um, light colored soda. It's like a, it's definitely like a darker colored soda. It's a little more uh, intense. Um, there's a lot going on with it too, so maybe I wouldn't compare it to Coca Cola. Maybe I'm going like with the uh, the Dr Pepper. Um, how many like there's 13 different flavors in Dr Pepper or some something. stupid shit like that. <laughs> um, 29. So I think it's a little bit, a little bit more complex, something like that. Um, but overall, it's 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 good. Um, I'd like to have a cigar with something like this and just sip it over, you know, a long period of time. Um, but definitely drink it. I think I well, I can't really judge it. I'd say it'd probably better be better cold. But I think if this was warmer, it would lose kind of that that mouthfeel and that kind of. Uh, I think it's supposed to be cold. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Uh, but I'll go ahead and rate it. I'll give it a uh, four, four and a quarter. It's uh, it's pretty good. So, oh, it's nice, awesome. I meant to say awesome first, but I said awesome. Aw- nice. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, At least you didn't just go ice. Ice, what? dude. Ice. <laughs> so ice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, I like. I like that uh, that mouthfeel you get. It's like the very first thing that I noticed. I like because you know, like it kicks you, it kicks you right in the mouth. Um, mm-hmm. It's got it's like a donkey um, to your face. Yeah, donkey punch to your face. Um, <laughs> it, it's got like a very unique set of tastes, and like it, it kind of changes from when you first, you know drink or first take a sip and then like as you like finish your gulp and then like the aftertaste comes in it like is constantly changing and i kind of like that that it does that so um you don't get bored you don't get bored and like drew said it's something that you want to just sip and not you know gulp down because it is a very like it has like certain characteristics to it that make you like not want to chug it, and also like it's also what like how much is this beer like twelve dollars or something? It's not something 13, you can, yeah. thirteen like bucks. thirteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to just chug this beer. Like you want to like you know like in like savor it and enjoy it. So, hmm, this is this is odd to me because this is a a very different um, style of Belgian ale that that I've had. It's like clearly a darker Belgium ale. I believe and it's a Belgian strong ale. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm going to give it a four and a quarter. It's not, um, it, it's not like a bad thing that it's got all these like different textures and, you know, tastes coming on. But I do think that like this isn't a beer that I would get all the time. But mm-hmm. like when you do have it, like you like you enjoy it, right? This is like a winter beer, an, mm-hmm. an indoor winter beer, right? So we're off season, but you know we'll we'll take it for what it is. <laughs> I got the AC going; it's cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, now that we've uh, got that introduction for the beer out of the way, why don't we delve right into Soccer Request episode twelve? Mm. Um, this one is called the Dawn Guild. So, um, basically this is about, they're going to be making a TV special on this founders festival they will be holding in Monoyama following Yoshino and the girls. So, uh, um, Drew, why don't you start us off and, uh, talk about this? 
I didn't like this episode, and I'll explain why. Um, so we had the kind of change of hearts over a couple of different episodes for all the different ministers, all the different girls. And we kind of started the series with Yoshino having her like existential crisis and be- coming to terms with like living in the town and stuff like that. And then they're just like, we're going to come full circle now that we've gone through everybody. Let's go back to Yoshino and have her do it all over again. And it's just like, it seems like forced and boring. It's just like they, the computer, the computer, the um, TV like interviewer show people, they go around and, you know, they get great information from all the girls and they're like, you're like this because this, this is why I like the town. This is what I've been going through, blah, blah, blah. And then they get to Yoshino and like, you're kind of a boring generic bitch. And the only reason you're here is because it was a mistake by the town. Like you're boring. And she's like, don't call me normal. And I don't know, I felt like it was like very forced and it's just like, well, we're going to do this all over again. Let's start again with Yoshino and then let's go to the next girl and the next girl. I already see it happening because it's like, um, what's, um, what's the actress's uh, name again? Um, it's slipping my mind. Uh, the short haired girl. Yoshino. Oh, no, Maki. no, no. no you're talking about Maki. Yeah. right we haven't resolved like her issue with her dad so that's going to be something um you know we're for um sanai you know she's still dealing with um you know moving away from tokyo um we have um you know all the other girls just like they still have problems that we haven't totally solved so it's just like you know, we're ending the season and we're going to start all over again, everybody. Like, here we go. And I don't know. I didn't I didn't like it. I found it forced and boring. Alec, your thoughts? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm trying to remember it because I watched it like four days ago. Um, but I, I I mean, I get what you're saying about it being kind of forced. It was kind of odd to go back to Yoshino and have her have problems, even though the whole like start of the like first two episodes was all about how she was working in a village and she was trying to get away from small towns and go to Tokyo because there's so much to do there or whatever. And now all of a sudden she's just sad because she's normal or something like that. Um, but like beyond that, I thought it was kind of cool. The episode was kind of fun to watch just with, you know, the, the guy he's from Maniyama and then we had the random, we had sandal son again and that's always funny. Um, but I think it was cool to see the progress of the grandma. She seems to be making, you know, strides after seeing Ririko sing and whatnot. She is actually like, let's use this reserve or whatever and we'll help the town or whatever. So it seems like it's kind of cool to see the, the board of ministers and, uh, the tourism board somewhat getting along and all these people kind of banding together to, to help the town well, at the at the core of it everybody loves the town everybody wants the town to yeah. be successful yeah. um so They're i think stupid. that's that's a good <laughs> uh, i think i think that's like a good thing and you know everybody coming together is 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 really nice um so yeah i definitely i definitely agree with that it's good to see you know at least not everybody saying like well we give up towns yep. towns ruined mm-hmm. town grandma ruined, didn't trigger me this time yeah, I was I was surprised that she actually like went along with it, but it's like you know it's showing some good character development, so I I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, so okay. I liked that about the episode. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you something, Rolando. Yeah. Um, do you think that the uh, the guy, the TV producer, or whatever, the guy from Maniyama, do you think he has like some sort of ulterior motive? Um, for like bringing that epic band here and like not asking for anything in return and like being super fake and cheesy. Um. Actually, that kind of ties into what I was going to say about the episode, so I'll I'll cover that. Um, so, initially, I kind of saw this episode a bit differently. Um, I didn't really see it as a focus on Yoshino, like, herself. I thought that was just a consequence of, like, the events that occurred. So, like, we have this guy, Amamiya, who, like you said, is a, is a native of Monoyama, and he's a TV producer. So um, they they bring him in and they're going to do a TV special on Monoyama. And basically they're going to cover the Minister Girls and Yoshino trying to plan this Founders Festival for Monoyama and, you know, attract the interest for the town. And as we all know, with quote-unquote reality TV... It's not exactly complete reality. I personally know this because I work in reality TV. 
So uh, sorry to break it to you. If you believe that everything you see on reality TV is real, it is not. A lot of it is. You mean scripted. there's 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 things that are scripted <laughs> in reality TV, bro? What? But we do what? we do see it because you know Amamiya talks about like he he tells Yoshino he's like you're too normal. Like mm -hmm. all these other girls have certain issues that happened and they overcame them, but you just happened to come here on this random circumstance and you're just too normal. There's nothing interesting about you other than the than yeah. how you joined it. And so yeah, he's like, basically he's like, you have a nice story, but you know, honestly, you're just like generic and it's like, who, who cares? It's basically <laughs> she's it's doing, she's say. doing her job and yeah. there's no huge drama behind it. And that's what's boring to the viewer. Right. Well, and I think what really hits home for her too is like she is fucking boring because and she's generic and she can't she couldn't find a job in Tokyo because she's this way. She had to resort to getting randomly picked uh, for random circumstance. And that's just like pow, you know, falcon punch right to the face. Like you are a boring generic chick. And she's like trying to break out of that. And she's like got good like quirks and, and things that make her like a little bit unique. But at the same time, there's nothing that distinguishes her as something special right and i think that's exactly that's exactly why this has become like her situation now has become a consequence of you know the all of the events because reality tv like you wouldn't make a reality tv show about some dude that sits behind a desk doing accounting work right right like you would make reality tv show about the kardashians because or the uh, Jersey Shore, yeah. Because there, <laughs> there's always drama that's going to happen around that. So, um, we like going back to your question. We have this Amamiya dude, and he brings this Ptolemaios group, this this rock band that's popular in that fictional Japan, um, to the Founders Festival in order to draw people to the event. Well, one, yes, like he's doing this because. He knows, oh, they're not going to fucking get anyone to come to this festival because they're just boring people. And so, like, his ulterior motive there is, hey, like, I'm going to bring this popular band and attract a bunch of people from all around Japan to Monoyama. He does it, like, it's not necessarily, like, because he's got, like, this, you know, like, black heart or whatever. Like, he's trying to, he does it because, like, you can see his passion for the town when he kind of, you know, yells at everybody for, like, br bringing up their excuses of whether bringing yeah. the band, band will work. He's like, this is why, like, quitters don't bring, like, anything to this town. Like, this is why it'll never be on the map kind of thing. He's, like, basically, like, fuck you, this is why I left because everybody's like this here. Yeah, and, like, he wants his town, you know, like, to be on the map, but at the same time, he's doing it in a way that, like, it's bringing fake publicity, publicity because, yeah, you bring in this popular band, has nothing to do with Maniyama. And then, like, it's probably... What's going to happen is all of the, the attention of the tourists is going to be for the band only, and they're not going to give any shit about this trivia thing they're doing, any of yeah. the shops and all that, all that stuff. So right. I feel like that's what's going to happen in the next episode. Um, the, and the then whole Yoshino's going to get blamed for it, and... There's our problem right. for the start of the next season. <laughs> what I was kind of thinking is uh, like same kind of thing with the band that you were just talking. But they're also going to it's going to like trash the town because they're going to have all these people coming for the band. And they're not going to give a shit about the town. And they're just going to like trash the area where the band is. And, you know, and yeah. then they're going to have that issue and be like, oh, my God, why do we do this? Outsiders suck. And then we fall back into the same crap. Right. It's also Japan, though. So like people have manners and are neat, unlike America. But that's. Yeah. You know, but who, this who is television. Kind of, th yeah, this is a this is a conflict that they can create. I definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you. It's television. Yeah. No, the guy Amamiya is just like no, this everyone trash the town. Pictures. Everyone trash the town. We're everyone? trying to make it dramatic. <laughs> this is moving pictures. This isn't television. Oh my bad. Oh, it's moving sorry. pictures. Moving animated. Sorry. Animated pictures. Animated. I'm animated I'm watching these pictures. these animated moving pictures on my on my gray and white TV. So oh, these Chinese cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, last thing to talk about with this episode. So this climax scene, right? Um, where oh. Yoshino brings both the community club and the board of merchants together and asks them for a favor. Basically, 
to help volunteer for the trivia event so that as many people, as many tourists can participate as possible. And also mm -hmm. so that the, the shops around town will, you know, take these $5 or five, yeah, $5, 500 yen coupons that they're going to give to the participants and kind of, you know, accept them. It's kind of that's just what I love too. They money. were they were bitching about five like fucking five dollars. Well, like, five dollars for a lot of people. So I mean, I guess it does add up. But um, I mean, you're you're sell you're selling like a like say it's a meal. You're selling a meal for like ten dollars, like half off a meal for like maybe fifty people. You got to win the trivia to get it. So it's like yeah, I don't know. I don't. I didn't think it was that much money. But well, that's I mean, but that's where the main conflict comes from because it's like we've got the people that don't want to give the money away. And they're going like, well, I mean, this is just your stupid idea. Like, why should we have to pay for this idea that you've got? Whereas, like, we've got other people that, like, the chef dude, he's kind of like, well, I think it's a good idea to do this because it promote like, like, you have to give something to someone in order for them to want to come back for it, right? It's not like yeah. you've, you've created this new, it's not like, uh, for an example, you create a new product. It's not like giving away a free sample of that product is going to just instantly lose you all of your money. It's going to generate interest. So he's thinking in the long term, some of the others think in the long term. And then like in, this is where you're Alec, you're talking about uh, Ririko's grandmother. Mm -hmm. She, cause you know, she like is actually the catalyst to bring it all together and like help Yoshino. Like, yeah, cause she's like the leader of all the merchant people. So yeah. So like she comes to she comes and says like yeah like we'll do it so like what did you think, um, about this this new change we've seen in the grandmother? I think it's good. Um, I think it'll help the tourism board a lot, and she'll be you know doing things to kind of promote people to come as well and get the mer uh, merchant what is it the board of merchants kind of behind mm -hmm. more of their stuff, which I think can only be good in the end. Um. But I am glad that she's changing because normally every time she just triggers me and less and less uh, like episode to episode, she's been triggering me less and less um, than she did at the very beginning. So that's that's very nice. I enjoy that very much. <laughs> um, there was something else I was going to mention about this scene, um, but I forgot. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, maybe you can <laughs> think about it. Well, Drew, do you want to talk about what you thought about this scene? I mean, it's just like the the tourism board circle jerking the merchants and being like, hey, by the way, you know, we got this like expensive, cool band coming. Like, please give us money. And after much convincing, they're like, yeah, this is probably a good idea if we care about the town because this is going to this. There's not going to be another opportunity like this in the future. I mean, yeah, they're in the real. sticks like <laughs> they're in the fucking sticks. And that's what like Twitter was saying. Like, I can't believe the band is going to play out there. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And at least like they finally see that. And it takes like some convincing because like the chef dude's like he's digging it. He's like, I'm going to charge fucking, you know, a hundred dollars for a meal for two people. <laughs> and, you know, five dollars off of that. That's tight. I'm down. Um, the Rama dudes the, too. <laughs> the, yeah, the, yeah, the Rama dudes like he's like hell yeah. You know, I our stuff's like really expensive, but like we're willing to give like a little bit of a discount. Five dollars. And then uh, <laughs> it's like one percent of the, the price. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the stupid uh, bookstore guy who's fucking retarded. He's like, "How is this gonna help me?" And then they're like, "Dude, we set we set you up with this awesome sausage fest of a barbecue with these three girls that we brought in." Like, he's like, "Oh yeah, that was oh, that yeah, was that tight." Like, yeah, was let's, great. I forgot but, about that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do this. And so, I mean, it was it was. I was thinking of it like that in like a comical sense. So I thought it was like funny. But uh, the thing I did enjoy that we've been you know constantly talking about is uh, the kind of change of heart of the grandma she's less of a bitch i mean she's still a bitch but like she's at least like saying like hey if not now then when basically um, yeah, to use the yes. reserve fund yeah exactly. the the it's thing like, about the scene that i was i just remembered was uh everybody else is gonna get something good out of this the bookstore dude is gonna get fucked because nobody's gonna <laughs> go like he is the one business that this can't help like <laughs> yeah let me buy some of your textbooks bro like no, no dude no dude maybe like maybe he uh, will get some fucked. like <laughs> yeah maybe that there's there's that and also like maybe like a bunch of like rich city people like come and then they find a girl out here 
well, actually, there's no girls in this town. Um, so maybe some, um, you know, city girl moves out here and then they have kids and then they need to go to school and then they buy books from his story. Like, there yeah. you go. He's got that 10 year <laughs> plan. <laughs> yeah. But yep. he, he's complaining about that where it's just like how many episodes ago he was just like, I don't know, whatever. I don't give a shit. I, no, I don't care. I don't like, care. My story's going to go out of business anyways. Years, like, it's like, why does it matter yes. to you now? You just like fucking you gave, already gave up, dude. Plus, we saw the, the, the magazine stand that he had uh, go in when the people were there. It's yeah, he had, like, the Playboy and porn there. So porn. if those rich dudes from Tokyo do come out, they can get their, their dirty mags easily. Just, That's like, right. he's going like, to make tons right of the porn street. Sale. Yeah. Right out yeah. on the street. Just <laughs> throw they're them like, out can there. we put these away? And they're like, well, we have them out for you guys. It's like, yeah, but we're different. These are people that are <laughs> our, our town here. has all men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically all men and five chicks. <laughs> yeah five chicks and a grandma um right well we'll see what happens in the next episode um it it seems like there will be some sort of drama coming in but uh yeah so let's move on and uh, talk about arrow manga so let's move into the happy hour so here's the final episode of arrow manga sensei good and um <laughs> I think it's pretty unanimous here that we all don't like this show very much. Nope. Nope. Don't so, like it. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> I like it. I just don't like Sagiri. Okay. Well, uh, Drew, why don't you talk about this episode? I mean, it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it like, it where, do, where do I even, be, where do I even begin? Like, so we knew it was going to happen. We had closure to the story last episode. This episode is going to be fan service. It's going to bring everybody back, all the characters back that, uh, you know, we've seen throughout the series. Um, I don't know. Sagiri's sucks. Um, <laughs> the scene that's, that stands out for me the most is like when, um, what's uh, what's the book, uh, the bookkeeper girl's name? I don't um, even remember. I don't uh, remember her name. She's like so minor girl. character. She comes over and brings in a fucking uh, doujin and is like, oh, hey, your book's been out for one day, but they already published the doujin. Or maybe it was like a month or something. I don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, this is porn. And yeah. uh, Siguri's like, give me, give me that porn. And it was just awkward. It was and, so and stupid. stupid. It was so stupid. It, it was. How stupid, <laughs> was, Alec? How stupid. So stupid. It was so dumb. But and, then she, and then uh, she's like trying to get why? the book away from him. She's like hissing at him. And he's like, what, yeah. what are you? Like, <laughs> I was so annoyed. I, it's like, here, give me that. And then and then they're screaming upstairs because they're playing Twister and they're going to fall over. And then he's like, what was that? And then she steals it and he goes to get it and she scratches him and is like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You were bad before, who but lets, Jesus Christ. And who then, lets an 11 year old have fucking porn? And yeah, that's the other like, thing. You're 16, bro. Slap her across the face and be like, give me that back, bitch. You don't look at this. And then, yeah. and then he's like, she's like, I'm going to go dry. And then she goes and draws her own. Like, who the... You're the worst older brother I've ever met, ever, just ever. <laughs> well, she she draws her own and like doesn't even know like what a like how to draw a dick. Yeah, it's in the wrong. It's in the wrong place fucking... in the wrong like shape and shit. And that and that brings out like discount Mega Man who sucks. And, like, <laughs> oh, let me draw my Mega my Man. fucking my fucking let me draw my little brother's dick who's like he's twenty years old. Like no, yeah. he's like literally four. Oh, this is my like... boyfriend's dick. It's like that's clearly your little brother. He's like he looks like he's in kindergarten. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about how fucked up it is that she's just like, yeah, this is my boyfriend's dick. It's like, would you like undress your little brother and like look at his dick? Like, what the fuck? And then draw a picture. Yeah, you got a weird relationship with your brother in kindergarten. (laughs) The other thing about this that was I found somewhat annoying, but it was obvious is at the end when the book girl, whatever her name was, was leaving. And she's like, if you ever get rich and famous, I wouldn't mind marrying you. And he's like, you're just after the money. And then she has that smirk smile like, no, I actually really like you. And I was like, this is so dumb. This is so stupid. Yeah, God. they're setting up setting up next season, dude. Yeah, they're trying to ready? set up next season. I'm like, dear. Yeah, Jesus. you ready for second season? I'm not dude. watching it. If it you better guys not get a second. Season. I'm not. I'm not talking about it. It's gonna get a second I'm not season. Talking dude. About it. I'm not talking about it. I would rather. <laughs> the, the, I'd rather Saikano get a third season and A1 throw this fucking series to hell. Like this <laughs> is bad. It's not In the good. year of our Lord Kendrick Lamar. This will get another season. <laughs> 
Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it, though. You guys can watch it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to watch, watch a second it. season of this show. I'm going to watch it. I'm I already told it. you guys that yeah. I would have dropped this show if we were not covering it. <laughs> they just need a spin-off like, of Elf Yamada Sensei. That's it. That's did, you, did you like this show better than Masamune-kun? Or no. which one did you no. like? I like Masamune-kun. You like Masamune-kun, Masamune-kun better? was better because at least... It, it was only like the last two or three episodes of that that was bad. Yeah. It's the exact reason why I I say that Ori Emo is better than this, because I liked Ori Emo until the ending came. Well, so we talk we've talked about every week we talk about Ori Emo and this comes up like, what what for you Rolando are like the main differences that that you say like we're not talking about the ending we all know how the ending is the ending sucks, but. In terms of being a better show, like what makes Oriemo better than this? Is it like the less amounts of fan service? Is it the characters? Like what for you makes Oriemo a better show? Besides the ending, we're not talking about the ending. Um, yeah, the characters I like a bit better in Oriemo, although I didn't like the childhood friend. Um, Kirino yeah. got annoying near the end, but like she wasn't as bad earlier in the show, and then. Mm. She's like Sundre, but she's not like retarded. She's like not Sigiri like Sigiri. Yeah. yeah. Um, she can go up and down stairs. Yes, she can go up and down stairs. But wow. Yeah. Um, I would say less fan servicey also made it good. But although you did have that point like a few episodes ago where you said like, well, that was kind of the first of the genre. So like they, mm. uh, it would have been, it would have been like yeah, that. because like, like I did notice as that series went on in the second season, they started being more and more overt about their fan service mm-hmm. stuff. So I can see how this being the spiritual successor is way over the top. Um, so yeah, there's just, there's all, all of those factors, honestly. Masamune yeah. Kun's revenge was way better than this show. I thought the story of, I liked the story of Masamune Kun's until they were like, Hey, with that stupid development where it's like the twin or well, this, whatever. This has no, so. this has no story though. This yeah, is true. Yeah. fan true. service, fan service, the game. That's, true. that's, that's another thing where it's like, or emo had a story behind it. Whereas this, mm-hmm. this just had zero story. Well, like there was a story, to be but fair, it wasn't. Or, or emo started, started having a story and then it just like crumbled. Yeah. <laughs> like at the point where he like breaks up with Kuroneko, like the story devolves and it's just like, I'm going with this girl now. I'm going with this girl now. Like granted, nonsense. Like I may gripe about or emo's ending. That ending was not as just out of nowhere as the ending for Haganai. Um, that was like a very like just out of nowhere ending. Um, Dude, don't talk to me about Haganai's ending because it makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> we got both of those endings in the same year, so. <laughs> Um, that was, that was, quite uh, a, that was, I'm quite so a, mad because <laughs> I love Hog and I, dude, I fucking love yeah, it. Yeah. And then they throw that God, random ass so, ending was, at you. It was random and it was weird. Like why? <laughs> it was weird. I haven't seen uh, that show, anyway. so I can say nothing. You need to watch it, dude. That's like my, one <laughs> oh, of my favorite shows. I thought shows, you watched dude. it, but I, I guess not. So. Um, there's a lot of shows I need to watch. That one's the, um, what was the actual full name? It's like can't make friends or something like i don't have many friends oh yeah i don't have many friends um, oh that's on my it's list got my, it's got so my much. waifu it's got my oh, waifu yeah in it, it's dude. got your it's got drew's waifu if you didn't know the stereotype yeah. um or the the archetype for drew's drew's waifus it's <laughs> big breasted blondes <laughs> Sounds who right. will stomp on your balls yeah, yeah. <laughs> who have a little bit sadistic so- um side to them like super super sundry, super sadistic, and will control your life because that's what I need, dude. I'm telling you, if you watch, if you watch Saikano, you would be a, a fan of Utaha. Um, she's not blonde, but she has all of those other aspects that you like. I can I can forego the blonde for the other aspects. The blonde the blonde is like it's not that important. The they just always draw those characters as blonde. <laughs> Yes. So yes. it's more like a condition. 95 percent. Ninety five percent. All right. Well, um, ball stop. So eight point five. Eight point five percent by volume. Eight point five percent. Um, by volume. what a overall se- series. I'm not going to say season because I hope there's no second season. 
overall series thoughts for um, Aramanga Sensei? Let's start with uh, you, Drew. Oh God. Um, oh God. It's like a five. It's like it's like a five for me. Like the 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 characters are decent. Muramasa grew on me. Um, Elf Yamada is top tier. Um, I like um, girl who we can't remember her name. The the one who Store. works at the book who brings him porn. Um, she's <laughs> great, <laughs> porn but, once. but but uh, that's what she's gonna be remembered for. It's fine. But um, discount Megaman sucks. I fucking um, love that nickname. Sagiri <laughs> Sagir- Sagiri sucks. Um, it's the show had no purpose. The show had no direction. Um, the art was excellent. Um, I'm glad they brought Claris back. Um, that's what's maybe keeping this a little bit higher for me, but it, it's gotta be a five for me. It's just, it's, it, it had no direction. The main character, was he better than Smoothske? <laughs> I don't know. Smoothske is pretty fucking bad. Um, at least he had some sort of drive to do something. Whereas Smoothske was like, my little sister is the best. <laughs> um, so I don't know. They both, they're both pretty bad. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's. I, I think I rated Oriemo seven on uh, Mal, but this gets a five. It's just, and and that's because of Elf Yamada, Claris, um, and that's really about it. I mean, I don't know. All right, <laughs> um, Alec, what about you? I give it the same. I give it a five. Um, similar reasons. I liked Elf Yamada Sensei. By the end, I liked Muramasa. I actually liked her in this last episode when he was like, this is wrong. And then, <laughs> and he like made Elf Yamada since I look at the porn or whatever. And then she's like, I can't help you. This is your fault. I just thought <laughs> she was, was kind of yeah, that was dope. funny. <laughs> she's like, nah, bro, you made a girl like look at porn and now mm-hmm. you want me to help you. I'm sorry. And she just like looks away and then she goes and draws the, the David or whatever. And, uh, but because of her, Elf I don't want to start talking about that bookstore chick. Um, I liked the show. I liked Elf Yamada's brother. He was funny. And the scenes that they had yeah, when they were on the funny. island or whatever. And he was like, marriage! And the other guy had the misunderstanding or whatever. Um, so for those moments, I give it a five. But because literally every moment without any of those characters was torture, uh, it does not get any higher than that. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm surprisingly in this last episode, I, I did enjoy Muramasa's character more so I can kind of see how like she was kind of growing on you guys she's she wasn't like completely fucking annoying in this episode (laughs) so like there I guess you know kudos to her for that but um like I said I would have dropped this series if we weren't covering it I'm leaning towards a four out of ten on this one um I don't like giving series low ratings especially if i you know like take the time to finish them i think drew you mentioned like if you finish a show like you usually give them like a six you know like at least because like it kept your interest Mm -hmm. until the end this one i would have dropped so i'm not really feeling bad about giving it a four it it's it's got some redeeming qualities. Like Elf is a great character. Um, Mermasa was getting better. Um, but I just can't get over the fact that Sigiri is the main heroine and she's annoying as fuck. I so thought Sigiri's on heroin. Yeah, she's on heroin. <laughs> um, it, it Maybe she'd be more likable if she was, because she would just she would just lay there and not say <laughs> she would talk, try to go up and down stairs. She would just do nothing. She would just fall down the stairs. <laughs> um, Masamune is. Uh, I'm gonna say he's worse than Kyosuke because Kyosuke got so bad too. at the end of season two of Oriemo, where he just like it kind of looked like his character took a 360. Um, you know, after he at after he Kyo, visits Kirino least, in the uh, like yeah. when she goes abroad, that was when his character kind of took a three sixty and like it started to go downhill in my eyes. At least, like, at least, like Kyosuke was dedicated to like one girl or another. Like it changed throughout the series, whereas uh, Masamune is just oblivious. He's not oblivious, but he's just stupid. He's too cliche. 
and and he yeah he's too cliche that's that's the perfect that's the perfect like right there um way too cliche and just like uh, he's not like yeah he he's obsessed with sagiri but won't admit it to himself yeah and that's annoying to me he's also uh voiced by kirito's voice actor and he seems to be getting Ugh, i know all the the male harem protagonist roles um yeah. he's not yeah. only sword art online in this he's also the voice of the main guy or he's also the main guy in saikano and like shows like that so saikano is a way better show than this is he, in Mon- is he in monogatari no who was he in was he the main guy in uh sword art yeah yeah oh, he's, he was kirito oh you just said that didn't you yeah I didn't. I forgot his name. Oh. <laughs> no, I forgot. I forgot the character's name. I'm so bad with remembering names. Like I, I forever will we, remember we fucking Discount Megumin. <laughs> Discount Megumin is so. such a great name. Though. I will remember that longer dude. than I remember fucking Sagiri. You guys be like Sagiri. I'm like, That's I don't what know she who is, the fuck dude. that is. The thing is, like, Discount Megumin <laughs> is her is, nickname, though, but her name is also just Meg. Like she calls herself Megumin, so it's. Mm-hmm. It's just like sure her real name is like Megumi, yeah, but yeah. it's like I'm Meg I'm Mega Man. It's like oh you're trying to jump on like Konosuba's tails like one season after and actually season good two show. ended like <laughs> an actually good show. Yeah. Hey, we yeah. can get popularity from a good show. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so our overall rating for the show is like a four and a half. Four or seven yeah. five something like that. Yeah. I was leaning towards a four or four and a half, but I gave it a five. So. Because Unfortunately, because. it ended up that way. I don't feel too bad about it, but I guess like it, we're gonna have shows like this that don't get rated high. It's just yeah. like I your expectations I, are always I, different. I like watching, I like watching like the kind of shit shows though. It, it makes it puts everything in perspective. So like when you get a good one, it's like you can really appreciate. Like right. um, Attack on Titan was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes like this was this was enjoyable. It wasn't like ever a pain for me to watch. It's just it just wasn't good. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of enjoyable. It had its funny moments, but it, it was never to me. It was never like, oh, God, I got to watch Arrow Manga Sensei this week. Like, it, I, I like the genre. I think the genre is fine. Um, if it got another season, I would watch it because I like the pain. I like the abuse. But <laughs> I don't know. Masochist. It's, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so now that we're done kind of covering those. um. I'll kind of leave it up to you guys if you want to talk about any other shows that you watched, like anything. I know Akashic Records ended um, this last week. Alec and I have been watching that. Um, I didn't see the last this last episode of Renai Bokun. I don't know if you watched it, Drew. Um, anything you guys want? I haven't been keeping up. I've been really busy with work and shit. I haven't had time to watch anything other than the shows that we've been <laughs> watching. So I, I hope to finish Renai Bokun. Um, I think it, I think it's like kind of funny. I don't think I think well where I got I think I'm like up to like episode eight or nine, um, but I would rate it lower than Arrow Manga. It's just like it's the same thing kind of over and over again. It's kind of got a little bit more of a story, but it's well, know, it's you're on like eight like or nine. Four. Like I haven't seen yeah. the last one, but the current development is just really stupid. So I'm just gonna give you that warning right there. Yeah. Um, I yeah, watched maybe I won't that. Watch it then. I mean, it's like a six. four for me right now. I still have to watch six, yeah. the beach episode. And um, you hate I, uh, you no. hate the pink eyelashes. So. They're weird. They creep me out. Well, she, it's like she's like playing a big part in the plot for the later part of it. So you might just want to mm-hmm. stop watching. Yeah, I, I assumed yeah. she would. And then I was like, oh, a fan service episode as if the whole show wasn't already fan service enough. So I just like I just haven't watched it. I'm like, no, nah, I don't really feel like it. It's lulzy yeah. and it's not serious, but I'm like. I would rather take this time and watch Akashic Records or Hinako Note, That's, which is actually um, really good. It's a, it's it's a show for me too. Um, that it's like it's kind of a pain to watch every yeah, week. Right. So I'm just like I don't really I don't really care. I would rather go watch a show where I'm like I like this show and I want to watch it rather than yeah love yeah. tyrant as it's called right. on Crunchyroll. Uh, it's not great. I usually only watch it if I want to turn my brain off, like while eating, you know, like have dinner and mm-hmm. then like have something going on in the background while I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. surfing the internet or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I mean, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Alec, did you see the last episode of Akashic Records? I did. Okay. And it was good. I liked 
I liked how they kind of ended. Did it. we find out? No. What the Akashic no. record? Yes, we did. Actually, is. we did actually. The Akashic they records exactly are a real thing. Is, they apparently. are a real thing. Oh, it's a real thing. It's supposed to be like the knowledge of like the world and all that crap. Um, the world. The world. You could, it's like with the knowledge of with the Akashic records, you could control the world. Or something yeah, it's like supposed that. to be like the. Like Super. the secret knowledge behind everything. You can look it up. There's a Wikipedia article about the actual Akashic like records. Like the Dead Sea Scrolls or whatever. Um, I think it's supposed think to be in the flying like island. Some, it's something like they kind of like made shit. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's going to turn out to be in that flying island. I personally did did not like the the la- this last arc in Akashic Records. And this is something I talked to to my sister about um, because she was watching the show, too. And we both kind of agreed that the show like was entertaining up until this last arc where it was just kind of like, oh, eh." it's so rushed because like it It only had 12 episodes. And so this last arc had two episodes for it. Like there there was no way they were going to make this good. And it's kind of a shame because like the rest of it was entertaining and it's this last episode for me in particular was just very, very rushed. So many things happened where if they had like, I want to say two more episodes to dedicate to it, they would have, it would have been like way better, but like whatever, like in, in particular, I'm, I know my sister said like, what the fuck they made it seem like, um, what's his name left for like a year but he was yeah. only gone for a week. You find yeah. out in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this construed drama for a cliffhanger. So that was weird. Um, <laughs> but I, I do agree. It felt rushed. Um, the, this final ending wasn't as inter- entertaining as the rest of the show, but I still liked it. Um, I didn't like the final quote, you know, fight quote unquote that he had with Sistine or whatever. Yeah. I thought that was kind of lame, that but um, I thought the, at least the the whole like kind of development that they took was a little bit it, it would have like you said if they had more time it would have been really good so i maybe i was looking at it for what it like could have been rather mm-hmm. than what it was and like thinking this is kind of neat but yeah if they had like an extra you know how i know it's neat anyways um if they had like an extra the way it is because the way because of the akashic records cause of the way they are <laughs> um so yeah do you guys I, I, uh, I it. think it'll get another sure. season or no. No, it's not getting another season. They made it look like like they leave it open ended like all of these shows do. But it's not going to get another season. Yeah, no, it's I just would like there it to, to every yeah, every but. everything gets an open ending like but nothing. Honestly, <laughs> the way I felt seasons, was like, like they the way the part of the reason why it was so rushed was because they decided against going from an anime original ending and to make it, you know, follow what actually happens in the light novels, just in case it's popular enough to get a second season. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of why I thought it was the last episode and arc in general was like wishy-washy. They were like, oh, we have more viewers yeah. than we thought. Yeah. So it hmm. could get a second season. I don't think it's going to get a second season. This is one of those shows that they clearly put out there to promote the light novels, which is something that like they do all the time in anime they just like give them these like mm-hmm. here give mm-hmm. it 12 episodes to see what you guys can accomplish and then like hopefully people um buy the light novels and that's exactly why konosuba like became so popular because like it mm-hmm. was popular first season they got a second season that was good unfortunately we won't get a third season but um like the light novel yeah. sales are off the charts we might get a megaman spinoff we might get a megaman spinoff isn't there an ova that you said was the spinoff coming up it's uh, i think it concentrates on Mega Man, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens yeah well uh so alec with this show um personally i'm gonna with the way it ended i'm gonna give it like a like a six and a half maybe a seven yeah let's go with seven i'll give it the benefit of the doubt because i did enjoy everything up to the last um arc uh what do you what would you give it i actually was gonna give it a seven um it was entertaining the whole way through and I like a lot of the characters. Um, so I thought it was, you know, it was good for what it was. I don't think it was as good as attack on Titan. So oh, yeah. I don't want to give it higher than that. But yeah, I, th- I think a seven is pretty uh, justified. I might go to a seven and a half, but I'm going to go with seven just to, 
stick okay. to that. I don't think anything this season yeah. was as good as Attack on Titan. Well, Attack on Titan was just <laughs> you guys so didn't watch Saikano. I thought Saikano was uh, was better than was For, of the, the, of the, the way that you I... described uh, the way that you described Saikano to me. I might watch it because anything that gets compared to Monogatari, a is big a big reason God-like. why that show gets a lot of flack is because people don't look beyond like the way it starts out. So it starts out as like. Mm-hmm harem rom-com and it does that to like bring you in and then kind of deconstructs the genre afterwards and then you get like especially the second season has been way better than the first and they do kind of tie in all the hints and all this stuff that like is covered even in the first season um and it all like leads and the story is like it's very purposefully written and that's what I like about it. I think I think that's where um, Monogatari does things way better than a lot of anime. Yeah. At, like, okay. I get what you're saying, too, though. But Monogatari, like, it takes itself... It, it has moments where it takes itself super seriously, but also has those, those comedic moments and things like that. But it's it's always at a point where, you know, there there is lewd things that happen. There is fan service. There is things like that. But the way that it does it is so integral to the story and to character development and things like that, where it's it's kind of in a league of its own where, you know, other other animes and things like that try to emulate it. But at the same time, they can't reach that pinnacle. I, I think it has to do with the the light novel author because he has a lot to do with uh, working like closely with Shaft, um, and you can see that too with the uh, Kizu Monogatari um, movies. I don't I don't want to get into everything like crazy right now. Right. Um, I'll I'll make several blog posts about the new season of Monogatari. Um, because it is the ending of the uh, the main story. Um, the rest of the stories that were written are kind of spinoffs. But it's it 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 doesn't have to do what shows like Saikano have to do, where they like make fun of the harem genre or they make fun of um, you know girls with big boobs and things like that. Like Monogatari has all those things, but the way that it does it is so serious and so like integral to the plot and character development and things like that. It's, it's so hard to emulate and so hard to get a show that is like even, even close. Like I, I, I'm a, I'm a Monogatari like fan shit like I I admit that freely, but there's no other show that I've ever watched that is anywhere close to to what I can rate Monogatari as a whole. Like Monogatari as a whole for me is a ten. Every single arc, every single um, every single plot development, every single character is super important. I don't hate any characters. I it's just it's it's an it's the best rounded show I've ever watched and that's including like um American television, American movies, different things like that. It's it's totally wholly um just genius <laughs> if 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 that's the appropriate word it's just right. it's it's great so i'm gonna be jizzing on myself all next season because uh you know monogatari is coming to a close for the uh, the main story um but so when it, going back to where this conversation started right. um if you compare something with monogatari i, I do want to give it a chance um, give it a shot so i i will probably i will probably start it and uh, see what i it's, think it's a deconstruction of the harem genre, but it's like you said about Monogatari, Monogatari, and I agree with you with your points about Monogatari. Like, it's very purposefully written, and like, it's it's clever. It's not, like it doesn't mm-hmm. it. Do, there's no cheese factor behind all the stuff. It like that that happens. It everything is for a reason, correct? So that's exactly how I feel about um, Saikano and. To give it the comparison to Monogatari, like I normally wouldn't give things that comparison because Monogatari is something that's very purposefully written. Um, it may be, you know, difficult to translate into like the animated medium that like mm-hmm. may turn off, you know, viewers. Like I know Alex not a big fan of all of the, um, I don't know how to say it, but like. Alec, you couldn't even get past the first 45 seconds of the first episode, right? I didn't want to read that much. <laughs> a you lot to, of you have to you have to read. It's yeah. it's very it's very dialogue important. 
because there's so much just within the writing of Monogatari that to to get the full enjoyment out of it. And that's how I feel about Saikano, especially with how this second season ended and hopefully there's a third to finish the story because the light novel is about to end this year with one more volume. Um, so they could, you know, have another season and end it. Um, and the story is good enough um, to, um, and it's very well written to to warrant that. But I would say give it a chance. If you, there are a lot of people that were turned off in the first season just because it started off, you know, as like, you know, a rom-com harem in the beginning. But like when you get past that and then realize what, like the reason why, you know, it's it starts that way. It's got this, you know, it's very, it's deliberate like Monogatari. And especially like this second season has like, I've been really impressed with what's happened. I just, I very, very recommend watching it. I would give the second Highly season recommend. a nine out of 10. What I want to say in regards to like the reading and all that stuff too, and maybe you can uh, fill me in with Saikano if, if this is kind of the same case, but like Monogatari, you're reading a lot. And yeah. It's 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 a lot, but at the same time, is you feel rewarded at the end when everything comes together and you've read all this stuff and you're making these different connections because they don't ob- uh, like they don't just come out and say like this is what is important, you fucking idiot. Here it is for yeah. you. No, you have yeah. to do that. You have to do that interpretation and you have to read all that things and you start making these connections and you're just like, wow, this is really fucking. They deep. don't treat like, you like a, like an I idiot. have a my yeah. Uh, like I have a fucking migraine, like thinking about all the things that just happened and my mind just like exploded. Um, one example I give for that in um, people give um, Hanamana Guitari a lot of shit. Um, it is uh, it is one of the spinoff like OVAs or movies that deal with uh, the very future of Monogatari. Um, it's like near the end of the series and near the end of the light novels and all the short stories and things like that. But when you come to the realization, um, because it deals with a couple of characters that nobody really likes, it deals with Kambaru, um, who is she's is she's okay, boy? but she's like uh, sort of this like yeah, she's like okay. this Yuri lesbian yeah. character. Um, <laughs> But you watch this and then you watch and they very subtly do this and you will miss it like if if you're not paying attention. But they show the ending um, while the credits are rolling and you are watching this ending credit scene. I'm not going to spoil it or anything like that because I want you guys to like watch it and understand like the feels of this. But you watch this and then it clicks in your head like why this is so important. You're just like, holy shit. Like I watched this whole movie and I thought it was ass. And then they like switch it on you like, hey check this out and they just like they don't spoon feed you they do it during the ending credits theme and you're just like fuck when like my brain just exploded that that was so awesome when was like, hanamonogatari oh, was that so um before or after second season it's last in the timeline uh it came out after second season okay. as its own spinoff yeah. it came out as like um i believe it was like a new year's uh special. okay so i haven't seen that um, yet I, yeah but, but chron- chronologically, it comes out. It comes out. It's last. Uh, so we just finished um, the last season that just came out was um, uh, Owari Monogatari. This is Owari that. season Great, two. Yeah. Exactly. This is Owari season two, and that's going to wrap up um, everything. It's it's the main um, ending to uh, Koyomi and Shinobu. So we'll find out what what happens with them. All right. Cool. Well, um, I don't. Sorry, I just uh, I just circle jerked all over this podcast oh, and hijacked no, I mean, Monogatari. But I kind of started. I, it I fucking with, love it. I was fucking love I it. Compared Saikano <laughs> to Monogatari, so it was like bound to happen. It was um, gonna happen. Well, um, anything else you guys want to add that we're not gonna be <laughs> tracking? I have to say, you both should watch Sword Oratoria. I actually think it's really good. Just to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, I want to. I want to I wanna watch it because I like Hestia, and yeah. I think that universe is really cool. I just got mm-hmm. it's had good. like no time to dedicate to other stuff. So, yeah, um, I just one, finally got yeah, around same. to finishing Sayakano and like doing all the like these blog posts on them. So, I just Ugh. like recommend it. Pretty, pretty good. It's it's a good show to watch. Cool. It's not like super serious, so you don't have to think or anything. But uh, they kind of they yeah. I wanted to ask you about it. 
I wanted to ask you about it too because I I know I wanted to watch it, but I'm like, is it worth it? It sounds like it's worth it. So I think I'll it's probably, worth I'll it personally, it. yeah. Because I was actually watching it the other day, and then I was like, man. And I went back and watched a couple of the episodes of the original uh, series because like there's some things that tie in, and you're like, I want to see it from that perspective mm-hmm. j- after just now seeing yeah, it in yeah. this perspective. So mm-hmm. it's really cool how it kind of that's cool like that's links cool. up like that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. The other one, Zero Kara. Uh, it's good, but if you only pick one, watch Sword Oratoria. Zero Kara was I'd yeah, give it a, like a six Zero out of ten. It, it was entertain. It's entertaining. Okay. Would you? What would you rate uh, Sword Oratoria? I'd probably give it like a seven and a half. I'd say. Okay, so it's, it's really around like Akashic Records then. Mm-hmm, yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I liked it a little better than Akashic Records so far, and it's still going. So. Okay. Well, that's good. Cool. Um, yeah. I'll have to check that out. I just haven't had time to catch up on it. Um. Yeah. So um. Why don't we uh, wrap up this episode 12, kind of the season finale episode uh, where all these shows starting are starting to end. Um, just a sneak peek into next week. We will be attending Anime Expo and um, we'll be talking about the stuff we did there, all of that jazz. And then um, Saturday, July 1st, um, yep. we will be having more content drew is talking about having you know blog posts or video blogs or whatever for um or owari monogatari season two um depending on if i catch up on monogatari um i do have a lot to go through we may you know do a special thing like sakurata reset that alec and i have been doing um i do have a post that will be coming up for the finale of saikano season two um that should come out this week and then um, what about you guys? Do you have anything planned? I still want to write that thing about the Belgian uh, like double, triple quad. Um, I just need to research some more information and stuff like that. Okay. Um, Drew? Cool. Yeah. Um, not really anything for me. I'm just, I, we saw me circle jerk about it, but I'm really hyped for Monogatari. I've, I'm waiting for how they're going to wrap it up because i um, I'm. I haven't read the light novels, but I'm. I want the series to finish. Then I'm gonna go back and read them in like chronological order because they come out in like random fucking orders. Because Noyosin is fucking crazy. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm waiting for waiting for it to end. I, I need to know. <laughs> need to know what happens. Like Spooky Oogie's crazy. Um, I can't recommend the show enough. Even if you're not caught up, start it. Get on it. It's it's awesome. All right. Well. Um... That will be it for us today. Uh, please uh, go on our WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. That is where you will find all of our episodes as well as any other blog posts we create. And then um, all of the specials, like the Sakurata special, all of that other stuff will be posted there as well. You will find those on our YouTube. Just search for Anime on Draft. You can find this podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes look up anime on draft and then our twitter is at anime on draft please feel free to tweet out to us or to use our contact page on our wordpress to give us any feedback or suggest anything so um that wraps it up for us this week um it has been fun uh and that's us signing out see you later everybody yeah i'm looking forward to uh starting a uh, a new season of anime with everybody so awesome catch you later